Right, um, CocoaPods finished installing the backend less as well. So I'm opening my project. For backend less, unlike the Firebase, it's written in Objective C. So in order to use it, we need a bridging header which is going to link our Objective-C code to our uh, Swift. So when you are installing the backend list, by default, it sets the bridging header. So let's go to Build Settings, file, search for bridging header. All right, uh, looks like we... No, this is the one, Objective-C bridging header. Looks like the new version of Packendless doesn't install the bridging header for us, which is actually good because I was going to do my own bridging header. All right, so uh, the easiest way to create a bridging header, just select any of your files here, Command N, or you can say File and you go to New and you say New File. So from here, I'm going to select Objective C file, click Next, give it any name. Click Next. Actually, make sure here it's a class NS object. Click Next and click Create. And here it says, would you like to configure uh, Objective-C bridging header file? You can say don't uh, create or create, which we are going to create it. So this way Xcode automatically creates a bridging header for us, which is, if you can see here, it says app bridging header dot age. This is going to be usually your application name and uh, bridging header. So if we go to our settings now, under Objective-C bridging header, you can see that uh, here it says, it shows the path of our bridging header. So it's inside our application. You can see the file here. And then the file name is app bridging header. So this is the easiest way to create a bridging header. The Once we are done, we can select the Objective-C files dot h dot m and you can just say command delete and move to trash because we no longer need them. If you couldn't uh, create a bridging header that way, you can still do it in command N to create and say header file. Click next, give it some name. Uh, we can call this my bridging header. Click create. This will create it. And then you are going to go to your build settings, navigate to your Objective-C bridging header and make sure that here the path shows your bridging header. So in my case, it will be up forward slash mybh.h and keep in mind it's case sensitive. So this is it. I'm going to delete my custom made bridging header. Again, this bridging header will be set up in uh, starter project so if you download it you are going to be all set so don't worry about this all right uh, for our uh, backend list to work we are going to navigate to our bridging header and here we are going to import uh, backend list bridging header so this is an import we put uh, this is an objective c type of import for swift we just say import without this mark here. So I'm going to put the file name here, which is uh, backendless bridging header dot h. Um, you can find this file name on backendless under help. There is a documentation is a very good place to find some information actually not only for backendless for any uh, third-party developer uh, you should always refer to their documentations to find information for you same for firebase if you go to docs this will give you all the information on the documentation you can click on the ios and here we have all kind of information we may need all right, so always keep, in, uh, keep an eye on the documentation when you are using some third-party libraries or uh, providers. All right, so this uh, backendless also, you can go to pods and here we should find our backendless and there should be a file called 
but candles bridging header actually you can even copy and paste this if you want just to make sure there are no typos because otherwise it won't work dot age all right uh, let's close this part so and also we're going to command p for build um, I'm going to check if there are any errors in the application because we have installed some uh, pods and then we have installed the backend less and linked our bridging header so it's good time to do a build here to make sure everything is working correctly before we begin this takes some time to build it all right uh, the build was succeeded so everything is working I'm going to choose an iPhone SE to run my application you can choose any any iPhone or any you can choose your device or any of the simulators you want just iPhone SE is quite small uh, another cool thing about Xcode uh, 9 is you can run on your device that is not even connected through cable so it's kind of wireless if you are connected to the same network you can run uh, the application on your device wirelessly which is very good from Apple that they finally provide this all right uh, let's go to our main storyboard and see what we have here um, I'm going to try to delete this one more time which mm, doesn't work all right um, so this is the basic part of setting up our project um, from next lecture I know these two three lectures were quite long and uh, boring because we were doing the setup part from the next lecture, we are going to start actually building our application, so we are going to have some fun there.